everyone. Welcome to Kelly's Creative Dream Studios. And this is part two of our technique for this week, inspired by the amazing Carrie the Crafter, or Carrie Griffiths. So we have our painted pages, and they were a little wrinkly. I took and pressed them all out. And I was going to have samples done, done up, and I thought, you know, this next part goes really quick. I don't think I need samples. So one of the videos, the video that I linked yesterday was about creating um, the painted surface that he did and then turned them into mini embellishments. I didn't do the mini embellishments part. Instead, I did the painted pages. And now I'm going to link you to the, another video where he made bases from book pages. And we've all done those. And you only need to paint the one side because we're going to get rid of the inside. And there are lots of ways to fold your book pages, but this way you start with, instead of plain book pages, you start with colored pages. And one of the first ones that he did, and we're just going to, let me straighten that up first. I don't want that one. Let me use my, let me use my trimmer. Because I have a jagged edge there, and it's going to drive me crazy. So I'm going to look on the back side so I can see where my, stuff is that and I'm just going to whip that down just like that and it's gone and I'll lay that aside we may still need it and now he used a glue stick I don't like using glue sticks for anything that well I can let me put it that away I can now to do this if you want to sew around your tags and your bases then you want to just put your glue primarily to the inside I doubt if I'm going to have my sewing machine up and able to do that, but what I am going to do is to avoid using less of my glue stick or less of my liquid glue, I'm going to use the glue stick on the inside and then I'm going to go around trying to make sure I'm in frame because my, my in frame line is hidden. I'm going to, let's, yeah, I'm going to use my glue my liquid glue, and remember, your liquid glue, you don't have to go to the very edge because it will squish out and seal the edges for you. And so I'm just going to do that and then fold this over. Okay, that way I've, I have my good glue around the perimeter to hold that down, and then I've got the glue stick in the middle. Instead of using all my expensive liquid glue in the center, it's still going to hold, and we're fine. So there we're going to wind up with a tall tag when we're done with that. Okay, let's switch to a different color. And let's use our purple one here. And again, I'm going to trim off my edge. This just gives you a different... A different idea of what to do with your... Well, I've got that trimmer out of the way. I'm going to trim this one down, too, because it's going to be the next one I use. So let's trim it down. I'll tell you, the wind is really kicking out there today. But we're supposed to be getting storms in here tomorrow, so that probably is, explains a lot. Okay, so this one... I'm going to do this one as a multi-folded tag. It'll wind up being a smaller tag. And again, I'm going to use my glue stick and just go into the center and then come back and use my more expensive glue around the perimeter. And it doesn't have to be a lot. Do you remember being in grade school and the teacher telling you, you don't need a lot of the paste. A little bit will work. It's true. And I'm going to match that up best I can. Should have brought one of my squeegees over here with me. I intended to, but we can use the ruler. There are lots of different things in your studio or in your crafting space that will do multiple things. Rulers are one of those. They actually work as great squeegees. Now this one we're going to turn into a half size tag. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run that there. Yeah, and doubling up on the glue. And let's run a little bit of the glue stick in the center just for a little extra posterity. Now, 
I'm not, one of the reasons I was going to have some done ahead of time and I didn't do it was so that we'd have dry ones that we could punch. But both of these glues dry really quick. Okay, then we have the blue one. And I'm going to cut this one in half. And it is, because I don't want to waste all the painted colors. So it is nine inches, so I need to cut it at four and a half. Okay. Now, the only thing about doing this is, what's going to happen? When I fold this, my words are going to be backwards, but that's okay. Because it's not about the words so much on the page. It's about having the color on something we have a surplus amount of. It's not necessarily about the book pages themselves, but how many of them we have in our stash, wondering what in the heck we're supposed to do with them. So I'm going to line that up. Best I can. There we go. I'm back with this. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. And I'm going to remember to put my glue stick in the center first. Because I have an abundance of the glue sticks. They're not expensive. This, however, is. This is my Tombow Mono. And I get it from Stampin' Up. And it is going up about a dollar a bottle. May 3rd. So... Not sure I'm going to be ordering any more from Stamping Up. I may be getting the larger bottles from Maddie at Spectrum Art Creations because you know what? At the larger bottle, they're cheaper per ounce anyway. Okay, so see, now we've got these and the letters are going the other direction. But when we go back and add stuff to this front, it's not going to make any difference. Let me see my circle punch over here that I want to use. Um, three quarter, one inch. Really wanted a larger circle, and I don't have one in a punch. However, Stampin' Up is coming out with a new two inch punch, and it will be available the first of or the third of May. Now this is going to be a little damp. Let me make some noise and hit it with the heat gun really quick. Dry that glue up so that I won't have to worry about it sticking in my punch. It's nice that I have gotten this corner to where I can do something with it. Because I can just grab the tools that I need and use them. Now I could choose to punch the hole up here at the top or I could put it here. Since this is going to glue down on my page, I'm going to leave, I'm going to do the fold edge at the top. And eyeball where my little notch, thumb notch needs to go. And there's a pocket. Now, I also have, now Terry has a cute, Terry has a cute little tool that he uses for his tag toppers. Mine's a little different. I have individual ones that help me decide where my notches need to go. And it looks like this one's going to be a good one. I'll slide that down. And... Snap that off. Those are my little trash cup. And then we have a tag. Just that quick and easy. The tall one, the same thing. See how much space I've got? So I'm going to bring that down and figure out how far down I need to come to make that. That's the wrong one. This is the one I need to use. The three inch. But I want a really deep triangle there. So I'm not going all the way to the top of the tag. That's going to help me determine how much of this comes off just like that and then we have a tall tag we have a short tag we have a pocket and with this one we can do the same thing let me trim this off like that and hit it with the heat gun Now we could do two, one of two things with this. We could set it as another tuck spot. We could fold it in half and make it a narrower tuck 
to go on the bottom of this one. Let's do that. I like that. And you know what? We're going to cut this in half so that we have two of them. And then you just, once you have them painted and they're dry, just start playing with them as you would any other book pages or um, digitals to do what you want. And let's go ahead and put a thumb in that one too. And I have, I just went and got it, my gold from, let's see if I've got a blank one. I don't see a blank one. I really wanted a blank dauber. I just ordered a whole bunch of daubers this morning from Stampin' Up. So I will have a dauber for every one of my Stampin' Up colors. Stampin' Up had... Um, as you're watching this, Stampin' Up! had free shipping on Wednesday. Let me see if one of these will work. I also ordered these off of Amazon. There are a hundred... Excuse me, there are a hundred of these in here. A lot cheaper than buying them at the dollar store or Walmart. So I'm just going to ink up my dauber there. And I'm going to come back. I decided I didn't want, since I'm using whites... And spring colors. I didn't want to use the coffee tones or the neutrals in here. I wanted to use the gold. And now that I'm down to the edges, I can come back with my ink pad. This one is from Teresa Collins. I've had it for years. I was telling my husband I've not seen Teresa do anything in the crafting world since um, she remarried after her husband's death. Um, I really like Teresa Collins' stuff. And now I'm just going to run this one here. Where am I? I am in frame. Miracle of miracles. I'm going to run this one on the edge. Just like this. And now we're going to have a, we'll have a layered pocket. Just like that. Okay. So then all you have to do is start filling those pockets up with a little bit of everything. Now, I have separate sizes here. I really like the one that Carrie has. It's an all-one template, and I'm going to link the video down below where he creates his um, tag template. And then we'll have another one of these, and we have this tall tag that we can embellish. So what you need to do for this week, get out your book pages, get out your acrylic paints, Doctor them up, and then, once they're dry, start putting them into configurations just like any other thing that you would add to a junk journal. And that's it for these. Now, I have one more thing to show you. I mentioned yesterday that I am doing the challenge for Natalie at Line.Arrow. And I'm using her Spring Blossoms kit. And my colors are a little washed out on some of them, but that's okay because they're spring. It just gives them more of a pastel look. So some of them I printed full on the back. Now these, I printed three or four of. Uh, I got a couple of them in cardstock, so I could use these for whatever I wanted and have a weight of ephemera. This one I did these in paper for pages, and they're plain white on the back for... Um, Plenty of writing space. Now there's some of these here that I printed this one, this one, and there's two different pages of those. So those are pages ready for a journal. And we've had some discussion about a loaded paper bag or stuffed paper bag, and some of them are making journals. Uh, some of them just did the bag and stuffed it full of tags. I am planning to make one and stuff it full of ephemera, and then I'm going to make a set, and that will be part of the challenge. And then the second one I will do pretty much the same way, but then I'm going to bring them together as a front and back cover for a journal. So we have this one, and with more white. I love this. This looks so pretty. And then I put it on the back of her uh, ledger paper. Same with 
this one, I love the tulips. And that rabbit just gets me. Just absolutely gets me. And I have an idea for him. I'm going to have to print him out in cardstock because I have an idea for him. And then there's this one. More the ledger. So the ledger, when I fold them, is going to give me ledger paper. And then I will create them like this so that they've got matching papers, that kind of thing. Play with those. And then these are all the ephemera tags and stuff that I printed. There are tags. And I printed a couple of each of the tags. So I'd have plenty to play with. See, there's that background paper and a uh, brushed linen. And a couple of those because you never have too many tags. I love her emblem. It looks like a cigar band. I love that. And then we have some smaller elements here and butterflies. Lots of things to fussy cut. Pockets. And there's another one of those. I want to see something here really quick. I see a lot of the same items, but they're in two different sizes. Now, let me flip ahead to this one really quick. This was the original size of these four cards. And then, oh, I got something sticky on the side of my hand. Then I went down to printing out at 5x7. So this is what the four of them look like when I printed them out at 5x7. And then this one is printed at 4x6. So I have three different sizes of these cards to work with in embellishments. And then here's a larger pocket and some more fussy cuts. And more tags, but they appear as if they've been stitched around. And I thought those were pretty cool. So that is my kit for Line Dot Arrow. And I cannot wait to start playing with the paper bag item. It is due on Friday. So I've got to get cracking because as you're seeing this, I also have a writer's retreat this weekend, uh, Wednesday or Thursday, or no, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And this is Bob's last weekend home. So I'm trying to cram a whole lot of things into three days this weekend. So that is it for me today. And that is your challenge for this week. Get out your acrylic paints. Dive into that box load of book pages that you have. Or newspapers or whatever. And make you some, some really cute tags and pockets. And I will see you back here next Wednesday. I've tried to get in here over the weekend, but I'm not promising to show you my paper bag book that may show up on Tuesday, maybe. And then I'll be back here Wednesday for our next piece of inspiration from Carrie the Crafter. Thanks for joining me in the studio today. As always, remember to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you again. Creative blessings.